I am Ross Gay, and I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, here to talk to you about or read from this book that's coming out February from Algonquin Books. One day I was walking up a, a hill in um, Umberto Day in Italy, and there were like bees in these linden trees, and there were flowers all over, sunflower fields, and, and I was like, well, this is so delightful. I should write an essay about this. And then I said, well, it'd be more interesting if I wrote an essay every day for a year about this. More challenging, too. And so the book is kind of a, like an artifact of that exploration. And it, you know, it kind of ends up being a, a kind of treatise on delight and the, the virtues and um, you know, the, the labor of delight. So I'm going to read to you a few of them quickly. This one's called Tomato on Board. It's number 80. Tomato on Board. What you don't know until you carry a tomato seedling through the airport and onto a plane is that carrying a tomato seedling through the airport and onto a plane will make people smile at you almost like you're carrying a baby, a quiet baby. <laughs> I did not know this until today, carrying my little tomato about three or four inches high in its four inch plastic starter pot, which my friend Michael gave to me, smirking about how I was going to get it home. Something about this at first felt naughty, not comparing a tomato to a baby, but carrying the tomato onto the plane. And so I slid the thing into my bag while going through security, which made them pull the bag for inspection. When the security guy saw it was a tomato, he smiled and said, I don't know how to check that. Have a good day. <laughs> but I quickly realized that one of its stems, which I almost wrote as arms, was broken from the jostling, and it only had four of them. So I decided I'd better just carry it out in the open and the shower of love began. Before boarding the final leg of my flight, one of the workers said, nice tomato, which I don't think was a come on. <laughs> and the flight attendant asked about the tomato at least five times, not an exaggeration, every time calling it my tomato. Where's my tomato? How's my tomato? You didn't lose my tomato, did you? <laughs> she even directed me to an open seat in the exit row. Why don't you guys go sit there and stretch out? <laughs> I gathered my things and set the little guy in the window seat so she could look out. When I got my water, I poured some into the little guy's soil. When we got bumpy, I put my hand on the little guy's container, careful not to snap another arm off. And when we landed and the pilot put the brakes on hard, my arm reflexively went across the seat, holding the little guy in place, the way my dad's arm would when he had to brake hard in that car without seat belts to speak of, and one of my very favorite gestures in the Encyclopedia of Human Gestures. And this one's called The Marfa Lights. The Marfa Lights. My buddy Pat and I went to shoot around at the courts here in Marfa today. We were warming up, shooting 12-footers, or doing slow spin moves and crossovers, when a young guy from the other side of the court swaggered toward us, holding a ball on his hip, the light gleaming in his earrings, and he challenged us to a two-on-two, pointing his thumb to himself and back to his buddy, at the other side of the court, draining threes from the corner. We agreed and went on to kick the shit out of them 21 to nothing. <laughs> That's a horrible figure of speech. I leave it in only to expose the violence we easily speak. We got more baskets than they did. That they were only 12 years old is irrelevant, <laughs> given as this was their home court. And they even had a crowd watching. Another little girl who, when one of the kids shouted to the gods, they're kicking our butts, said, I hope so, they're grown men. <laughs> Absolutely, 100% chance that he passes. I do it in the spring because I don't have any heavy cost. So, 